In the previous screencast, we showed you how to use Zig's translate C functionality to convert an entire C file, in this case shell.c, into Zig. In this screencast, we'll show you how to take that auto-translated code and uh, clean it up so that it's more canonical, uh, closer to what you would actually write by hand if you were writing Zig. Uh, so we'll start by looking at the C file and we'll go to the first function that we actually define here. This is shell init. So let's find that in the zig. Okay, and the first thing you might notice is that there are these calls to import standard metacast, uh, and those are being used to convert an integer value, uh, in this, for example, nrfuart hwfc enabled, into an enum value. Um, and the reason for that is that in C, enum values are just integers. They can be used interchangeably as integers. There's no type safety uh, across different enum types or from integer to enum, and vice versa. Uh, whereas in Zig, that, that stuff is checked. Um, so long story short, this is needed because there might be times when a, an enum is just used as an integer, but in this particular case, we're simply assigning to an enum field, so we don't need any kind of runtime casting like that. Uh, we can just directly use the enum value. And if we come back here, compile our code, still compiles, so that's good. Uh, and You'll see it's used in a bunch of places, anywhere that an enum value is directly used as an integer. Uh, so we'll just you know, pretend that we fixed all those. Um, a couple more here. And continuing along, next thing we see is this UART event handler function. And there's a lot of things going on here. So the first thing we'll look at is the actual signature to this function. Uh, you'll notice that the arguments are renamed. So if we come back to the C, your event handler, arguments are called p event and p context, but here they're called arg p event and arg p context. And the reason that happens is that in C, uh, function parameters or arguments are uh, actually variables. So for example, this would be syntactically valid C. Uh, it wouldn't do what you wanted, but Fundamentally, the point is that you can reassign arguments like this, unless they're const. Um, in zig, you can't do that. So in zig, something like argp event equals null is invalid. That won't compile. Um, so in case the C code were to reassign, uh, it does this renaming. But turns out this particular function does not reassign the variable. So p event is not reassigned. P context is not either. In fact, um, it's barely even used. Um, so that means we can simply use the real names and remove this. It should still compile after that small change. Good. All right, the next thing is an important one, and that's this special star C pointer type. That's a special type in Zig that should only be used by auto generated code from Translate C should never actually use it in code that you're writing. Uh, and the reason it exists is that in C, a pointer can point to one thing or can point to many things, like uh, an array. And there's no syntactic differentiation there. Whereas in Zig, a pointer to one will look like this, and a pointer to many will look like this. Uh, they're actually distinguished. So a pointer to many can't just be dereferenced. It has to use an index operator. And a pointer to one uh, can't use an index operator. It only can be dereferenced. So in this particular case, we know that p event is always going to be a pointer to one because it's a, uh, an event handler. So we can simply uh, use the regular pointer type instead of uh, a C pointer. The p context is an optional pointer to C void, and that is the equivalent of a void star, an unknown size uh, type. Uh, so we'll leave that alone, and then you'll notice the first thing it does is put it into a properly typed variable. Um, that's this C cast right here. The zig cast is a little more complicated, um, but we can actually clean this up a little bit as well. Um, so we'll notice that it's using the standard meta function again to get the alignment. Um, this function is needed in case the object type is a pointer or, um, we'll see here, pointer or function type, but in this case, shell context is just a struct, so we can simply use uh, 
the built-in align of operator. So align cast, align of shell context. Um, it's a pointer to one item, so we'll just use pointer to one. And it's an optional pointer. We don't know. It might be. Um, it might be null. We don't know. So we'll make it an optional pointer. Okay, and so we get an error when we try to compile. Expected type with a star C got just a star, the order event handler. Um, and so that is because when we declared our callback uh, saying that const nrfx your event t. So let's look at our handler. Um, so nrfx your event handler. So this is declaring the event handler type, which is essentially a function signature. And we'll see that it has the star c pointer. And we just changed this to be regular pointer. So we will do that. And we will try to build it again. And that's how it worked. All right, so at this point, let's flash our device and see if it's still working. Okay, um, no obvious problem. So we'll say it's still working. It's nice. Um, all right, so coming back to your event handler. And the next thing is this big while loop with a switch inside of it. And that corresponds to this switch here. The reason there's a while loop is that in Zig, the break statement can only be used within loops. There's no, or blocks uh, to break with a value. There's no breaking from a switch statement because Zig does not have fall through, unlike C. Uh, but if we come over here and read the code, we see that the break is always used at the end of a switch prong. There's no fall through deliberately being used. Um, and in fact, some of these aren't even used at all. So what we can do here is, one, we can remove these unused ones. Two, uh, we don't need to break from our else. And we have an extra block here. Okay, and we don't need the break and we're going to remove the while loop. So already it's a little bit nicer to read. And let's build it. Still builds. All right, the next thing is this switch statement is using integer values um, because, again, in C, enums are just integers. But this can actually look a little nicer if we use the enum value directly. So instead of casting this p event type to an integer here, uh, we're just going to directly use p event type. Okay, and instead of switching on an integer, we're going to use actual enum value. So if we come back to the C code, nrfx uart event rx done. So um, we have this. And then we just need to figure out the, we can either figure out the name of the type or we can use um, an enum constant like this. Okay, so. Oops, forgot to flash it. Okay, still working. Uh, so already it looks a little nicer. Uh, the next thing is right here, we're indexing into an array with ultimately zero. We're casting zero to a C int and then to an unsigned int. So we can just use zero, oops, zero here directly. And then the second argument, or third argument here, again, ultimately, it's just an integer of one, so we can use the value one. Okay, and now we come to this here, where pointer to int, and then int to pointer. So, some casting going on here. Uh, so let's see what happens if we just try to directly use this pointer instead of casting pointer to end and then casting it back to a pointer. So what we're going to do is remove all this casting. Let's see what happens here. 
cast discard. So that turns out that's why it was using pointer to int and then int to pointer. Uh, we're discarding the, the const qualifier. And this is actually a deficiency in the original C code. If we look at handle rx bytes here, it does not pass this as a const pointer, even though it never modifies uh, the value pointed to. So I am going to change it, change the signature of this function, uh, handle rx bytes. And well, we already know it's one item. And we're going to make it const. And we know that uh, the context is also just a pointer to one. Let's try that. Ah, optional pointer. So Zig just saved us a little bit. So this context, we've declared that it's optional. So it could be null. So we need to maintain uh, that constraint here. All right. And so right there, it just Zig just saved us from potentially dereferencing a null pointer. Um, so first thing I'll do is also get rid of this argument renaming. Okay, so let's, let's run make again to see that error again. Attempt to dereference non-pointer type optional pointer to shell context. So um, that's on line 3912. 3912 is right here. So uh, we've declared that context could be null, but then here we attempted to dereference it without checking whether it's null, uh, which if we did that, uh, if we do that, it'd be a Big problem. So uh, before I fix that, let's get rid of this while loop like we did before. Um, do this. And we're also going to uh, clean up this switch. So if we come back to handle Rx bytes in the C code, we'll see that each of the cases corresponds to uh, character literal. So we can switch that back to character literals. We don't need them to be integers. So we'll switch on this. And so each, H I R L and we have K S T. And finally, a default. Okay, so that is a little nicer. Um, let's also get rid of these extra blocks. And those are there because we have blocks in the C, even though they're not strictly necessary. And uh, we don't need break statements anymore. We still have our issue of potentially dereferencing a null pointer. So we need to look at each of those uses of context and um, see if we should check it. So the easiest way to do that uh, would be something like this. Um, in Zig, if statements can be used with optional pointers and capture that actual pointer value if it's not null, uh, like so. So we might do something like this. So we only want to execute this block if context is not null. And if it's not null, the actual pointer will go into a variable called p context. So we replace all the uses of context with p context. And if we compile that, we'll get an error for the next block, but at least the one that we're on now, 3907, should be fixed. So now 3918, and that's this block down here. So same situation, we want to check if that pointer is null. 
and update the references here. Okay, now it actually compiled. It's flash. And reset. We come over here and it still runs and our uh, functionality is still there, which is nice. Okay. Now the final things that we can look at are um, some of this casting in here. Uh, but a lot of that is pretty similar to what we already saw.